Hi guys, welcome back to In Case of Econ Struggles. Today we're talking about externalities. We're going to start off by talking about what externalities are intuitively. Then we're going to talk about the different types of externalities. We're going to talk about how to graph externalities. And then at the end, we're going to allude to the different ways in which we can deal with those externalities. But we will get more into detail on exactly how to deal with externalities in future videos. So again, timestamps are below if you'd like to jump around. Let's start off with the intuitive explanation of externalities. Now, the reason we're talking about externalities is because we know that I am making decisions that are best for me. But when I make those decisions that are best for me, I am not really thinking about how those decisions affect others. The idea behind externalities is we want to capture the fact that my decisions might affect others. I could affect others positively or I could affect others negatively. But the fact that my decision has an externality or has an effect on others is what we're talking about here. So for example, say that I'm driving down the street and I'm blasting loud music from my car. Well, my neighbors probably don't appreciate the fact that I am blasting loud music from my car. That's probably what we would call a negative externality because I am posing a cost on others that I am not taking into account when I decide to blast music from my car. My actions affect others. Me blasting my loud music, well, I might think it's great for me. It's going to affect others. I'm not taking my neighbor's feelings or the effect of my decision on my neighbors into account. And if I did, if I did think about how I feel when my neighbors blast music down my street, I might make different choices. Another example of an externality is maybe I have a dog and I bring my dog to the dog park and my neighbor benefit because their dogs get another dog to play with and that is a positive externality of my decision that I need to take my dog out for exercise. Let's be a little more concrete about these different types of externalities, different types of externalities being negative and positive externalities. Let's start with negative externalities. Again, a negative externality means there is an extra cost to society of my choice that I am not taking into account when I do something like blast music from my car. So the quantity that society would ideally like to have or Q S O C S star the quantity to society supply is less than the quantity of the private supply. So again, this is me blasting my music. Society doesn't really like the fact that I'm blasting music, so they would prefer a lower quantity of music coming from my car than actually exists. So if we wanted to deal with that, we would want to disincentivize me from blasting music from my car. Positive externalities, there's a benefit to society of my choice. Again, this is me bringing my dog to the dog park where all my neighbors are also bringing their dogs. So the quantity to society supplied star or the ideal quantity in society is greater than the quantity that is privately supplied. So for example, if I thought about the fact that my neighbors enjoy the fact that I bring my dog, I might bring my dog to the dog park more than I do just thinking about me and my dog individually. We would say that an activity that has a positive externality should be incentivized. Let's do another example. You've got our friend Bill and our friend Dave who live next to you and you like music. Bill is a trumpet master and Dave is his first time playing the trumpet. They're both playing at the same volume. They are both playing directly at your house. You would pay Bill to play his trumpet more and you would charge Dave unless he played less. He'd be like, all right, Dave, you're really bad at playing the trumpet. You say, if you want to play outside, you need to like mow my grass or something because I really don't like you playing your trumpet. Where Bill, you might slip Bill a $5 bill on his front porch and say, hey, could you play this afternoon because you play really well. So those would be a positive versus negative externality. And that is how you might incentivize Bill and Dave to play more or less, depending on what your optimal level of music from those neighbors is. That's all well and good, but let's talk about graphing externalities. So let's start with graphing negative externalities. So here is our supply and demand. We've got this private supply curve and we've got society's demand curve. So notice that the optimal quantity when we don't think about the externality is all the way up here. But again, Dave playing the trumpet or me blasting loud music from my car has a negative externality. So really, there's an extra cost to society that is represented by this upward shift towards the societal supply curve. Notice that when we graph demand against the society supply curve, the optimal quantity is actually lower than the quantity that's supplied when no externality is taken into account. So the supply to society is the private supply plus this externality. And this green Q star social is the social optimal amount of music coming from these trumpet players. Notice that this supply curve happens when we internalize the externality. So this is where Dave is being charged to play his trumpet or just when Dave realizes that his trumpet playing has a cost on society. It's the opposite when we have a positive externality. Notice that we have this private supply curve and this societal demand curve. When we don't think about or when we don't internalize the externality, we have this lower level of Q star or this private amount of supply in the market. 
when we add on the benefit, so that's going to bring the supply curve down by the size of the benefit to society or the size of the positive externality, we get this social supply curve. And when we plot that against demand, we get this higher level of Q star society or the level that society actually wants, which is higher than the privately supplied quantity. So again, this is when we internalize the externality. Now, how do we get suppliers to internalize this externality? How do you get me to realize that playing my music really loud from my car is bad? How do you get Bill to realize that playing this trumpet is nice and that we should have more of it? Well, you can do things like a Pugubian tax or Pugubian subsidy. You can do cap and trade. You can do the Coast Theorem, which is direct negotiations. We're going to talk about all of these separately in future videos, but hopefully this gives you a better idea of what externalities are and some intuitive understanding of externalities. If it was helpful, make sure to like and subscribe, and we will see you next time for another case of Econ Struggles.